everybody, hope you're well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, all today's CSK News stories will be time marked down below in the description for you guys to bounce around to whatever stories you want to talk about. Let's hop into our first story though that I want to actually talk about is the contract lock. We've seen several times in the past players out there who are either on the starting roster waiting to be bought out or actually on the bench waiting to be bought out by some other team. They don't enjoy being on their current organization and the organization almost seemingly is holding them hostage for a better buyout trying to make profit off these players. And this is actually going around the UK player Smuya as of right now, one of the better UK pro players in the scene right now, if not the best and most well-known UK player out there. He, of course, joined Epsilon many months ago. He was on their starting roster for a few weeks and actually was moved to their bench. And as of right now, a couple days ago, he announced his break until the end of 2018 because he's under a contract lock and currently on the bench of Epsilon Esports and he's not making or no longer making enough money to actually support himself. And he actually went on a long twit longer. I'll post that down below for all of you about his complaints where his actual, his used to be salary when he was on the starting roster was much higher than it is now when he's on the bench. Apparently there might be some kind of clause in his contract with Epsilon Esports. He was making $2,000 a month on their starting roster, but now that they've moved him to the bench, they only have to pay him $700 a month, which of course I'm sure many of you guys are aware of is not enough money to actually live off of, and he has to take a break until the end of 2018, December 2018 to be exact. Apparently that's when his contract finally expires, and he must take this break to actually go and find a real life job. So I'm going to show you guys some screenshots of his twit longer post. It makes you really feel bad for this guy, and the current situation we've seen so many times in the past with other players out there. Uh, some current examples of this would be Flipside Electronic. He was on that team for quite some time waiting to be bought out. Navi finally did just yesterday as that was announced. And another current example we'll talk about later on is the Immortals Trio. Henny, KNG, and, and of course Lucas. They've all been waiting to be bought out for quite some time. Have been on that bench for about a month and a half now or right around a month and they're waiting for a big buyout. Of course Immortals wants to make as much money as possible and people aren't really sure is Epsilon trying to make money off Smuya or are they just trying to keep him on the bench because they might at one point in the future actually actually use the guy. It seems unlikely. Of course, they actually currently have two to three other bench members out there. I know one of them actually has an eye injury, so he might be back sometime soon. So it seems like Epsilon is waiting for some kind of buyout out there. As of according to uh, himself, uh, Smuya, apparently the buyout's anywhere from forty dollars to $50,000, which he himself also admits is a very extreme buyout and is not likely to happen from any other team out there. So what do you guys think about this? Apparently, UK pro player Smuya is trapped right now on Epsilon's lineup. And it's really a kind of a, a stingy situation, a kind of a tough situation to talk on because if you sign that contract of course that organization has the rights to abide to those rules that you actually signed to. So if, the, if some kind of clause in that contract said if you're on our bench we only have to pay you so and so much money per month well then that's the rules you have to abide by. So part of me feels bad for Smuya here especially given his situation but part of me also says that's the contract you signed and you need to actually abide by those rules and maybe next time actually read through them. So what do you guys think about that but also in some other big news out there for all you Optic fans apparently Hector the former owner now Optic Gaming of course very well known on YouTube as well as throughout the esports scene. He was the former owner of Optic Gaming. Apparently has now sold away the majority ownership to the Texas Rangers. Actually a big investor over there. Uh, Neil Liebman I believe is his name. Actually of course bought that out for probably multi-million dollar investment. I'm, I'm telling you guys you all probably know what Optic is worth. This was, had to be a, one of the bigger sales in esports history but Hector is yet to talk about his actual loss of ownership. Who knows what kind of small percentage he actually currently retains but he is no longer the majority owner of Optic Gaming. He will of course still maintain his role inside Optic. So for all you Optic CSGO fans out there, currently they're in ESL Pro League. They're actually living in uh, Illinois, actually in the Chicago area in a house for ESL Pro League. After this season of ESL Pro League though, they're going to go back to Europe, but it all makes so much more sense because the rest of the, the gaming team, the rest of their teams, uh, the, the vast majority of teams they've actually branched out into are now staying inside Texas. So it makes so much sense. Now the majority owner is actually a Texas Ranger investor. If you guys don't know, it's actually a Major League Baseball team as well. Um, so yeah, it all makes sense why they actually moved to Dallas. Texas guys and now Hector is no longer the actual majority owner of Optic Gaming. We'll see how this actually affects the organization going forward but this is actually an investor for their Overwatch League spot as well as an NALCS League spot so he actually bought a lot of that and of course invested probably tens of millions of dollars so that was in huge news. And also in news last week I want to give you guys an update on the Anomaly situation. Many of you probably heard about the F1 situation. One of his good friends who's actually been in a couple of his videos as well as on his live streams from time to time. He's actually now a developer or one of the guys who is actually intertwined with the website known as CSGO Gold. Com. This is not a paid promotion, but he actually came out a while ago last week with a couple of videos about Anomaly, talking about their friendship and some hard times they've gone through and why he actually stopped working for CS Offer Me. Of course, that's Anomaly's very well-known trading website. Some updates for all of you guys. F1 did tweet out this. Apparently, there's no more problems, guys. We're going to see how this actually progresses in the future because it was a really, really weird instance. People were kind of confused because F1 posted, I think it was actually two videos about the, the subject. He seemed quite hurt by some action that Anomaly actually had done. We're not really sure what Anomaly 
Anomaly did to provoke this uh, instance. And also after talking to Anomaly, it does seem they are friends. Nothing to talk about, guys. So that was an update on that situation. We'll see what actually happens in the future with the website CSGO Gold. Now on top of that, even more importantly as well, we have a brand new announcement of a new coach out there, the Michaelaly of Coaches, and that is Peacemaker. Now I'm sure all of you guys are aware of the amount of transitions this guy has had. He first went from Games Academy to Tempo Storm. I think it was then to Liquid. On top of that, I think I want to say NRG, then Misfits. That might have been vice versa. And then, of course, he went to Tai Lu after that as well. This guy has bounced from team to team to team, and of course, his last four or five teams have all been for a very short string of time, and he is now becoming one of the most well-known coaches just for jumping from each organization of each of each region out there, now dipping from the Asian region all the way back into the European side of things, and he will now be joining up with, of course, the Danish team, Team Heroic. So, kind of another change. I want to know what you guys think about this. What do you guys think about a coach out there who is now coached for six or seven or even eight CSGO Pro teams? I'm not really sure how I feel about this, if it was actually a good thing to have a coach bounce around that much. And of course, he actually leaves Bondic from HR over at Tai Lu. I'm really kind of confused about the situation because, of course, on that new Tai Lu roster, a lot of those guys do not speak English, but with Bondic joining that team, the English is going to be the majority language. And I thought Peacemaker was going to be their translator because they actually had previously, a few weeks before Peacemaker had actually joined, they fired their translator. So I thought Peacemaker was going to be the one guy speaking English to all of them and trying to figure out being at translations, but apparently not. So we'll see what happens with Tai Lu. They've actually just qualified for the major qualifier to no surprise. They had really no competition. I'm sure you guys heard about that kind of instance. They always seem to qualify, almost always will guarantee to qualify. And so yeah, now we have Tai Lu leaving, uh, Peacemaker leaving Tai Lu and now joining Team Heroic. So best of luck to them in the future. And very last in today's episode of CSK News and the most is surprising story so far. I'm sure many of you are aware of the stories and the progressing uh, stories about the trio from Immortals currently on the bench right now. We're really not sure if K and G is still a part of the Immortals roster if he, if he actually was kicked. But of course by trio, I mean Henny and Lucas, the brothers, and alongside them KNG, the trio from Immortals, who is actually being sought to be bought out for around $600,000. According to Decay, other sources say anywhere from $600,000 to a million dollar buyout for those three players. And it was actually suspected a long time ago that Cleveland Cavaliers, led by Nade Shot, yes, that is the very well-known Nade Shot, might actually buy these guys out. Progression on the story, as yesterday, we had KNG post this on his Instagram story, seemingly hinting towards the future. Again, all three of these guys also do now follow the Cleveland Cavaliers and Nade Shot on Twitter. But besides that, no further information, guys. I imagine, though, this could be a, a very, very solid stone and a solid stepping stone for the future. The Cleveland Cavaliers, of course, buying an over, Overwatch League spot and, a, and, a, and a also an NALCS League spot as well. They have the money. Will they buy these guys out? I really do think so. On top of that, though, their one other option is, of course, the ex-Penta lineup. I know a lot of people actually forgot, me, myself included, forgot that Penta actually left their roster after, the, after grabbing that major qualifier spot. So the thing is, if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, leave a comment down below. What do you guys do? You have an unlimited source of money. Do you invest in a partial, a half Brazilian team? You have three players, Henny, Lucas, KNG, but they have a major spot. Or do you invest in a much, much cheaper option? And that could be the X Penta, that three-man lineup on screen for all of you. They, of course, are also down to three members, but they have a major qualifier spot and could have a chance to make the major itself. So what option do you guys go for? The more experienced, more expensive option, the less experienced, but also way less expensive option. I'm curious what you see, what you guys think. I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you guys all in a couple more days. I'm actually going to be gone this weekend going to visit my sister, so I'll probably see you guys again Sunday with another huge weekend recap of news that happened. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you guys did, please leave a like down below. More importantly, leave a comment. I'm going on a road trip this weekend, so I have plenty of time to reply to your comments. Leave a question or leave a hateful comment. I really don't care. And I will see you guys all in a couple days. And uh, goodbye.